uh, how could you possibly have a C++ conference in the UK without somebody from Bloomberg going on about allocators? So, I, I, uh, but this one's different because this one isn't about Bloomberg allocators, this one's about C++ 17, and this one isn't a thousand slides, and, sorry John, and this one isn't uh, three hours long. Um, so, this is, this, here we go. So, um, it's all really easy now, is, is really the, the bottom line here. And uh, um, the point is, C++ um, heap memory usage is very dynamic. So you write a very simple function. Here's a function that um, literally just um, counts the number of unique characters in the string to give it. Um, pretty, pretty simple way of doing that. And the thing that's counting, the set, is on the stack. Wonderful. Um, however, of course, the, the memory usage by that data structure as it builds its internal tree is going to be um, from, the, from the heap. Um, so, you'd be surprised, actually, as we'll, as we'll see in, in, a, in a moment, in only a couple of minutes, actually, um, you know, how many heap allocations you can end up doing um, here. And, of course, as, as, long, as soon as you get into heap allocations, you might have to be dealing with um, locking or thread local storage or all these kind of complexities, complex data structures, which you want to try and avoid if you possibly can. Plus the fact that stack is great for um, you know, efficient cache reads, and heap usually, usually isn't. So how can, we, how can we use this stack and exploit it more for these nice, clean data structures more, more easily? Um, STL supports this, always has done. Um, allocators, custom allocators, this template um, uh, uh, argument, it's complicated and nasty and it's evolved a little bit over the years, but it's, it's not, not very nice to use, is, is really the best thing to say. And you end up finding that th th these templates proliferate all the way down often into, into functions that actually need types that have these templates. Um, and you know, one string with one template doesn't is not the same type as a string with another kind of template. So it's just just nasty. Um, an alternative approach, which is I'm not going to talk about very much because it's a thing that Bloomberg did um, over the years, which has finally um, made its way into the into the standard, where the the, the allocator is not part of the, the class type. It's actually just a runtime argument. And the pros and cons, and we haven't got time for all of those, but it's now available actually in um, in C17, C17. So you don't need to take our uh, um, open source version, you can just get, for example, the Visual Studio 2017 compiler, um, and, and it's there in the runtime. And uh, basically, um, there's this new namespace that runs alongside the standard namespace called PMR, which gives you um, very simple allocator usage. And there's a thing called the PMR memory resource, which actually looks like this very, very simple um, allocator that you can derive from and you can use a, a, a set of allocators that are available. Um, let's measure, let's see how we can actually use this thing. So here's our function that counts unique um, characters. And here's some data um, to give it. When we run this, we actually get 22. Take, take my word for it. Um, it's the answer there. Um, we want to actually measure what's going on. So we, what we really need is a little custom allocator that just measures calls to new and delete. So um, we're going to write one. There it is. I wrote it very quickly earlier. Um, that's the most complicated piece of code you're going to see. Basically, that's something that is really just intersecting new and delete and counting the amount of memory that's being allocated and how many allocations you, you do. Let's run it. Um, by the way, I took out the, the print statement when I, when I measured the time, I'm just to say that. Um, I ran this on my simple 22 unique character string, 384 bytes allocated, 86 allocations happening inside that set, because it's building a tree as it, as it goes. 13.3 uh, microseconds. Um, how about if I actually use a, a special kind of allocator that allocates from a, a longer fixed buffer, and when you deallocate, it does absolutely nothing until you throw the whole thing away. Um, C++ 17 has that as a monotonic buffer resource. Let's plug it in. We plug it in, we now get more memory usage, because we're not throwing away as we go, but only eight allocations. 2.9 microseconds, four and a half times faster already. Um, let's give it a bit of a head start. So let's say, well actually, we'll tell you you can do a 4K allocation at the, at the start. Let's plug that in and a little bit faster again. 2.5 microseconds, one allocation, 5.3 times faster. Now, let's actually give it a stack buffer. So now, when we run this, because we, you know, we've measured, we know how much memory we need, zero bytes allocated in the stack from the heap, zero allocations, this thing is now running six times faster just because we've plugged in a stack-based allocator. So that's a pretty great number, 20 seconds left, apparently. Um, there, are, there are various allocators that come with the, the standard. Um, some pools, um, some thread safe, some not thread safe. And you can actually cascade these together. So, for example, you can have your counting allocator um, plugged into one of these monotonic buffer resources um, on the stack, and then you can actually use that in a pool. So you've now got 
a, uh, a thread-free pool that you can use for all, all your allocations. Please try it. Thank you very much.